Yeah, social media. I mean, this, the discussions about Section 230, I think, are like fairly interesting, but it doesn't go far enough. Social media is a oligarchy and a monopoly like we've never seen in this country before. I think the only thing that we can do is declare it a common carrier like we've done before with the phone companies, the power companies, and then make them a public utility that breaks up a lot of the control and the power they have and takes away their ability to influence the way that they do, the way that, that the media is able to make certain news stories disappear like we all saw of Hunter Biden's laptop in the lead up to the election. We can't allow that to happen. The way people can be essentially kicked off the internet, they can't bank, they can't hold a job, that's completely and totally unacceptable. This is a time where we actually need to use the tools and the power of the government to retain our sovereignty. Big tech is the biggest threat that we have right now. A lot of them are controlled by the Chinese Communist Party and their money and their agenda. They're deeply tied together along with the globalist agenda, but they're assaulting our nation. So this is a time where we need government intervention. And a lot of principled conservatives are going to go against this. But this is a time where we need nationalist policies that look out for what's best for the American people. Break them up, make them a public utility, declare them a common carrier, I think is the right answer. So this is actually something I know quite a bit about because I've had a very large presence on social media for a long time. About 500,000 people follow me online. I did uh, an interview with Lars Larson about two weeks ago where he asked me what I thought about the COVID vaccines. You guys have heard me tell the story. My mom and dad both were vaccinated. Then they got COVID. My dad passed away from COVID in, uh, in December after being vaccinated. YouTube heard my personal story that of my parents, and I'm telling the truth, and they took it down for medical misinformation. The reason that they're doing that is because they want to control the narrative. What other country can you think of that has to control the narrative at all costs? What's the first country that comes to your mind? It's China. And what we see happening is an importation of communism into our country, and it absolutely must not be tolerated. When you see that these people who have so much power, the public square is Facebook. The public square is Twitter. The public square is YouTube. And we must not allow certain people to control the narrative. We know that censorship happens when a lie begins to lose its power. And that is what's happening right now, which is why you saw YouTube take down my video, because it goes against a narrative that other doctors and virologists and very smart people from universities all over the world would agree with me on. But because it goes against one narrative, they don't want you to hear it. And that is wrong. And so for that reason, I believe we should should start treating these companies like utilities. They need to be broken up. If they are going to silence dissent, which is what this is all about, they want to silence dissent and control the narrative. If they are going to control the narrative like that, this is a place where government can actually be used for the people to say, no, no, no. We believe in the, mar in the free market, the market of ideas. And we support the First Amendment, your right to say what's on your mind, no matter what YouTube or Facebook or Twitter thinks. And I believe it's time to start bringing these guys to account because the damage that they're doing in controlling the narrative is hurting every single one of us. That was a great question.